Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. My name is Scott Reich, and this is Crime Talk, the most fact-driven, unbiased, true crime channel. All right, we've talked to you about this double homicide. The victims were Paul Murdaugh and his mother, Maggie. Now, this case has a lot of intrigue, and it's already made national news, and I think it's going to get very interesting. I wanted to give you a quick recap a timeline, so to speak, regarding what has taken place since this murder. It'll be important because we want to follow this case and be as accurate as possible. So now it's been nearly two and a half weeks since the shocking June 7th homicide of Paul Murdaugh and his mother, Maggie, on their estate in Collington County, which is in South Carolina. The shooting has garnered national and international attention due to the Murdaugh's family prominence in the Palmetto State. Rumors and theories have been rampant as people wonder who killed Paul Murdaugh, who was charged in the 2019 boat crash that killed a young woman and his mother, Maggie, and why they were killed. Now, following the double homicide, the 2019 boat crash that killed 19-year-old Mallory Beach is also facing new scrutiny. The South Carolina Attorney General's Office is probing how police handled the boat crash investigation that led to felony charges against Paul Murdaugh. Law enforcement has released little information in the wake of the shooting, and as late as this weekend, no suspects or arrests have been publicly announced. But let's give you a quick timeline. Monday, June 7th, between 9 and 9.30 p.m., Paul Murda and his mother, Maggie, die from gunshot wounds on their property. This took place at their hunting lodge in Islington. At 10.07, Alex Murda, father and husband of the victim, calls 911. He tells dispatch he returned to the property and found two bodies. The Collington County Sheriff's Office deputies respond to the scene. Those deputies contact the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division to help conduct the investigation. That is known as SLED. SLED regional agents begin arriving to the scene and take the lead in the investigation. That was about 11.47 p.m. Now, at 12.07 a.m., SLED crime scene agents begin arriving on the scene. They collect evidence and submit it to the agency's forensic lab. On Tuesday, June 8th, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, SLED, and the Collington County Sheriff's Office are investigating this double homicide at the well-known hunting lodge of the Murdaugh family. Early sources confirmed the victims were related to the Murdaugh family, but will not provide exact details. At 11.31 a.m., the Murdaugh's law firm releases a statement about the deaths on its Facebook page. This is the first public confirmation identifying the victims as Paul and Maggie Murdaugh. At 1.17 p.m., at the time of his death, Paul Murdaugh's felony charges were being prosecuted by the South Carolina Attorney General's Office. A spokesperson with the office says we obviously cannot proceed with the prosecution. So once we have a death certificate or other acceptable proof, we'll officially dismiss all charges against Mr. Paul Murdaugh. At 3.45 p.m., the family of Mallory Beach, the young lady who died in the 2019 boat crash, releases a statement through their lawyer, and it states, quote, The Beach family extends its deepest and warmest sympathies to the Murdaugh's family during this terrible time. Having suffered the devastating loss of their own daughter, the family prays that the Murdaugh's can find some level of peace from this tragic loss. They would like the family and the community to know that their thoughts and continued prayers are with the Murdaugh's. It is their most sincere hope that someone will come forward and cooperate with authorities so that the perpetrator of these senseless crimes can be brought to justice. On June 9th, the Collington County Sheriff's Office releases the initial police report from the double homicide. It is one sentence long 
and refers to a supplemental report that the department has declined to provide. Now, under South Carolina law, initial police reports must be made public within 14 days of an incident and must include details such as the nature and substance of the incident. The sheriff's office has also declined to release 911 recordings from the night of the shooting. At 2.50 p.m. that day, the state's top law enforcement officer of SLED, Chief Mark Keel, tells reporters, we are pursuing all leads and the investigation is continuing. On June 10th, an autopsy was performed on Paul and Maggie Murdaugh at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, and the full results will take six to eight weeks to complete. Now, the Collinson County Sheriff's Office says it turned the investigation over to SLED because of a conflict of interest. At 3.10 p.m., it's determined, and despite the three felony charges against Paul Murdaugh being dismissed because of his death, the criminal investigation into the 2019 Beaufort County boat crash will remain active, according to the South Carolina Attorney General's Office. At 440, sources familiar with the investigation confirm that one theory investigators are pursuing is the likelihood that Paul Murdaugh was targeted while his mother was killed because she was there by happenstance. Paul was shot in the head and upper body with a shotgun. Maggie Murdaugh was killed with what appears to be an assault rifle. At 6 p.m., the Hampton County coroners confirm Randolph Murdaugh III, the former state solicitor and patriarch of the Murdaugh family, dies days after the double homicide. Sources say he was ill at the time of his death. On June 11th, hundreds of people attend a celebration of life for Paul and Maggie Murdaugh at the Hampton Cemetery on Holly Street. One family member describes the two as well-lived and well-loved before rainstorms swiftly ended the services. On Sunday, June 13th, about 200 people attend the funeral services at the Hampton Cemetery for Randolph Murdaugh III. On Monday, June 14th at 11.45 a.m., the Colton County coroner Richard Harvey tells reporters Paul and Maggie Murdoch were both shot multiple times. He declines to answer any further questions about the autopsy results. At 3.38 p.m., a local newspaper, the Island Packet, publishes an exclusive report that Paul Murdaugh had two previously unreported brushes with law enforcement while free on bond. Those incidents include a traffic ticket in May of 2020 for driving more than 15 miles per hour over the speed limit and was fined for a minor boating violation earlier this year. Both of those incidents happened in Charleston County. On June 15th at 4.45 p.m., SLED releases their first public statement about the case, confirming that Alex Murdaugh discovered the bodies and called 911. On June 16th, about 10.35 a.m., Mark Tinsley, the lawyer representing the family of Mallory Beach, says police improperly tried to influence the 2019 boat crash investigation. At 1.28 p.m. that same day, SLED sets up a 24-hour tip line for people to call with information. That number is 803-896-2605. At 2.44 p.m., that day, the 14th Circuit Solicitor's Office, which stepped away from the 2019 boat crash investigation, refuses to say what role it played in the double homicide investigation, raising questions about a potential conflict of interest. On June 17th, the Murdaugh family's first interview since the murders, John Marvin Murdaugh and Randolph Randy Murdaugh IV, say strangers had threatened Paul Murdaugh before he was killed. That was on the Good Morning America show where they stated that they didn't take the threats seriously and looking back in hindsight, obviously they should have. That's midday that same day. Keep out signs and a metal gate in front of the Murdaugh's family property are put up. On June 17th, the Charleston Post and Courier sues SLED and the Collinson County Sheriff's Office for not releasing the public records related to the murders. On June 18th, another clip of the Murdaugh family's interview says Alex Murdaugh, Mallory Beach's family, and all occupants of the Sea Hunt boat that crashed near Paris Island in 2019 
voluntarily submitted to DNA samples to investigators. Then it's revealed that Alex Murdoch was authorized as a volunteer for the 14th Judicial Circuit Solicitor's Office. The Solicitor's Office still refuses to return any phone calls by inquiries related from the press. On June 18th, it's determined that the South Carolina Attorney General's Office had opened an investigation earlier this year into how police handled the 2019 boat crash investigation. A state grand jury is probing whether there was obstruction of justice during the investigation. Also that same day, SLED reports that they searched the University of South Carolina residence where Paul Murdaugh was living during his spring semester. And that's where we stand to date. Like I said, this family is very well connected, a lot of influence, and there was a lot of question as early on since Paul Murdaugh was the driver of this boat, why it took so long for charges to be filed. I don't think it takes a whole lot of common sense to come to the conclusion it was probably because his last name was Murdaugh. I think it's interesting, and obviously the police have to do their investigation, that everyone that was on that boat where Miss Mallory Beach was killed in that boating accident, submitted voluntarily to have their DNA taken for testing. It would make you think, and we try not to speculate, that the police are either trying to eliminate as suspects or look into all theories that maybe somehow this double homicide is related to that 2019 boat crash, where maybe someone doesn't think justice was going to be served. We will continue to follow this story. Hopefully enjoyed the timeline. Thanks for watching Crime Talk. We'll see you next time.